Tech-savvy students easily fooled by bias ads and fake news, a study says. By the Mercury News, adapted by the Newsella staff, published January 11, 2017. Before you read, define and explain the purpose of fake news in the box below. Stanford, California. Advertisement or news article? Think tank or lobbying group? Verified Facebook page or fake account? Students from middle to high school might be social media savvy nowadays, but they are easily fooled by biased sources, ads that resemble news articles, and even fake social media pages. A study released in November by the Stanford History Education Group showed. From January 15th to June 16th, researchers asked students across 12 states to complete 56 tasks. These tasks measured the student's ability to judge the credibility of online information. Researchers analyzed 7,804 responses from students located in a variety of schools, including those in lower-resourced classrooms in Los Angeles and wealthier suburbs outside Minneapolis. We were shocked, to be honest, by how consistently poor these students did, said Joel Breakstone, director of the Stanford History Education Group. Across the board, students really struggled. They read for content, and rarely do students consider where does this content come from. Sorting Fake Stories That Masquerade as News The new findings come as tech companies, including Facebook, Twitter, and Google, are trying to figure out how to stop the spread of misinformation. At the same time, these organizations want to avoid suppressing free, free speech. In the wake of Donald Trump's stunning presidential victory, some are blaming Facebook for not doing enough to combat fake news. Some believe that the fake news stories helped him gain support and win the, re, win the election. Facebook CEO and co-founder Mark Zuckerberg said the company was looking at different ways to combat the spread of misinformation. Facebook is considering showing warnings on stories flagged as fake or making it easier for people to report these posts. That might not be enough. Snippets of new information consistently flood social media sites and smartphones. With so much information to sort through, experts say that educators and parents also have to play a role in helping students separate fact from friction. What's the source? The number one skill that, stu that kids are going to need in the 21st century is media literacy and the power of discernment, said Stephen Balkum, founder and CEO of the Family Online Safety Institute. What is real and what is not real? What is reputable and what is not reputable? And the willingness to go deep and not just read a headline. For students, it is apparently an uphill learning battle. They are often taught in schools how to comprehend a written passage, but it's less common to learn about the source of the information presented to them. Breakstone said. As technology has quickly evolved, the teaching materials about news literacy have not kept up. Look beyond a catchy headline. In one assessment, 225 high school students were shown two Facebook posts about Trump announcing his candidacy for president. They were then asked which was the most trustworthy source. One post was from Fox News and had a verified check mark next to the media outlet's name. Another post was from the Fox, New Fox News The Facebook page and included a screenshot and tweet from Trump. Only a quarter of students recognized that one of the Facebook accounts was verified with a blue check mark. More than 30% thought the unverified Facebook page was more trustworthy source because it included a tweet from Trump. More than 80% of the 203 middle school students show the homepage of Slate's website thought Sponsored content was a news story when in fact it was a way of labeling ads that are designed to look like articles. College students, meanwhile, had trouble figuring out that the website's minimumwage.com is managed by advocates for the food and beverage industry who are paid to fight against minimum wage increases. Beware of, quote, sponsored content. Better labeling might be a partial solution. The Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, in 2015 urged companies to be more clear about the language they use to identify ads. Clarity is especially important when ads resemble news articles, product reviews, and other online content. Paid advertisement and sponsored advertising content are more likely to be understood than sponsored by, because consumers might think the content was funded by an advertiser but not created by it, the FTC said in a guide. Breakstone noted that the Internet has become compl a, a complicated space to navigate. Advertisers and other, organi other organizations often try to hide who they are, and some groups and individuals spread news stories that are simply lies. In this environment, Breakstone said it is crucial for students to understand what makes a particular piece of information reputable. The article questions. Number one, now from your before you read, now 
After you read, redefine and explain the purpose of fake news after reading this article. Who wrote this? When was it written? Question number three. What type of source is this? Question number four. Why was it created and who is the intended audience? Question five. Read the paragraph below and answer the questions that follow. From January 15th to June I'm sorry, from January 2015 to June 2016, researchers asked students across 12 states to complete 56 tasks. These tasks measured the students' ability to judge the credibility of online information. Researchers analyzed 7,804 responses from students located in a variety of schools, including those in lower resource classrooms in Los Angeles and wealthier suburbs outside of Minneapolis. Number five, why does the author include this paragraph in the article? A to explain why there was a difference in results from results between students of different backgrounds, B, to highlight the timeline in which the survey started and ended, C, to describe the methodology and scope of the survey, or D, to criticize the ways that researchers collected data. Read the section, look beyond a catchy headline, and answer the question below. Look beyond a catchy headline. In one assessment, 225 high school students were shown two Facebook posts about Trump announcing his candidacy for president. They were then asked which was the most trustworthy source. One post was from Fox News and had a verified check mark next to the media outlet's name. Another post was from Fox News, the Facebook page, and included a screenshot of a tweet from Trump. Only a quarter of the students recognized that one of the Facebook accounts was verified with a blue check mark. More than 30% thought the unverified Facebook page was a more trustworthy source because it included a tweet from Trump. More than 80% of the 203 middle school students shown the homepage of Slate's website thought sponsored content was a news story when in fact it was a way of labeling ads that are designed to look like articles. College students, meanwhile, had trouble figuring out that the website minimumwage.com is managed by advocates for the food and beverage industry who are paid to fight against minimum wage increases. Number six, what is the most likely reason for including the first par for including the first paragraph in the section? A, to describe how Fox News shares information about Donald Trump. B, to highlight how many students consider Twitter to be a source of news. C, to contrast the features of verified and unverified Facebook accounts. Or D, to show how the survey asked students to determine between fake and real news. The central idea, number seven. The central idea of the article is mostly developed by A. Providing facts about the dangers of fake news B. Explaining how fake news content is hard for many people to recognize C. Highlighting the differences between fake and real news or D. Contrasting the approaches different companies are taking to combat fake news And the last question, number eight. Read the section, Sorting Fake Stories That Masquerade as News. Which of the following sentences is the most important to the development of the main idea? Here's the section. Sorting fake news that masquerades as sorting fake stories that masquerade as news. The new findings come as tech companies, including Facebook, Twitter, and Google, are trying to figure out how to stop the spread of misinformation. At the same time, these organizations want to avoid suppressing free speech. In the wake of Donald Trump's stunning presidential victory, some are blaming Facebook for not doing enough to combat fake news. Some believe that fake news stories helped him to gain support and win the election. Facebook CEO and co-founder Mark Zuckerberg said the company was looking at different ways to combat the information, the spread of misinformation. Facebook is considering showing warnings on stories flagged as fake or making it easier for people to report those posts. That might not be enough. Snippets of new information consistently flood social media sites and smartphones with so much information to sort through. Experts say that educators and parents also have to play a role in helping students separate fact from fiction. Which of the following sentences is most important to the development of the main idea of the selection I just read? In the wake of Donald Trump's stunning presidential victory, some are blaming Facebook for not doing enough to combat fake news. B. Facebook is considering showing warnings on stories flagged as fake or make it easier for people to report these posts. C. Snippets of new information consistently flood social media sites and smartphones. Or D, with so much information to sort through, experts say that educators and parents also have to play a role in helping students separate fact from fiction. This concludes your article reading and the question follow-up questions that need to be answered as well.